I suffered from severe mental illness, paralyzing anxiety, fear of death, panic attacks, racing thoughts, debilitating depression, impending doom. I noticed in 1996, early on in the year, I, I started to really struggle with making decisions. Little decisions, uh, decisions about where to go grocery shopping or what night to do my banking, what route to take home from work. And it started to be a real distraction and, and I became obsessed with making the perfect decision. No matter what I did, the, the anxiety just kept mounting, kept mounting, and three months later, they admitted me to the psych ward. From there, everything fell apart. Sean told me he struggled with mental health actually on our first date. He actually told me everything within the first two hours that we met. He told me about his struggle in the previous year, a year and a half, that he'd been hospitalized. He told me about the time that he had uh, done some self-harm, that he had been on medications. He also told me that he had recovered and that he was fine, he was symptomless, he wasn't on any medications, and he looked great. Sean started exhibiting symptoms again, probably within the first year, although I didn't really know, I didn't attribute it to necessarily being an illness. He just seemed very stressed. He had started a new job, we just bought a house, he had a new car, he was newly married. So I kind of thought, you know, maybe Sean was just more stressed. I didn't realize it was an illness up until the day I actually found some medications in his closet when I was cleaning it out. He was self-medicating with some antipsychotics and antidepressants that he had acquired years before when he was still seeing a psychiatrist during that time period when he was first ill. And it was at that point that I realized that he was struggling a lot more than what I thought he was. And I started to experience voices. I started hearing voices, uh, not audibly again, but experiencing thoughts that definitely I did not believe that originated with me. Like, I was not the source, source of these thoughts. And it was, it was commands, it was threats. Um, it, was, it was like a bully that was with me that I couldn't get any physical distance from. It would follow me everywhere. It's like having a, uh, really, it was like having a terrorist in my head because there were death threats constantly. I didn't realize, I think, the threats that were coming because I could just, I couldn't hear them. The voices were starting to command him to break certain things in the house, to get rid of certain things in the house. So he started talking about using hammers, axes, saws. He was kicking in the computer tower. He had broken our poster bed. And then finally, I had enough evidence, I guess, that you know, help was justified now by the police. So the police handcuff him and take him away. And that was not the way I wanted Sean to get medical help, but I really had no other options at that point. There wasn't anyone else to turn to. It was sort of a last resort on my part, but it was obviously necessary at this point. They told me that I would be placed into chronic care, hospitalized, medicated, likely for life. I wouldn't get my life back. So everything that you could imagine, that a, a negative forecast of my future, was just kind of all heaped on my shoulders. I didn't know what was going on. Right after Sean was hospitalized, um, I thought, you know what, I really need to get into the word here. So I turned on Kenneth Copeland Ministries and Jerry Savell and Kenneth Copeland were doing a broadcast called The God of the Breakthrough. And it was exactly, just from the title, I knew that was exactly what I needed. And there was a word from Jerry Savell that came through that I knew was just for me. And what he said was, You don't have to wait for your breakthrough anymore. The God of the breakthrough Praise is God. in your midst. And that word just went right through me and stayed with me for the remainder of the summer. In January and February of 2006, Dr. Colbert was once again on Kenneth Copeland Ministries and he was promoting two books, Toxic Relief and Stressless at the time. And so Sean and I had decided we would go to the bookstore and purchase these two books. And it didn't seem like a big leading from the Holy Spirit, but that turned out to be really the springboard for what we were gonna do next. I just really felt God saying, you need to go to Florida. And I think as a Christian, you have that connection with God through the Holy Spirit, that He can lead you sometimes very, very specifically. Yes, you still need to stand on the Word. Yes, you still need to speak the Word. Yes, you still need to believe the Word. But 
there might be some additional actions that need to come alongside of that. I made an appointment for the clinic in November and then I presented my idea to Sean about you know what, how he would feel about going to see Dr. Colbert in Florida. And Sean had one sentence for me, no, I'm not going. But I had one lucid thought and that was simply, if the God that Doris believes in is the true God, and I'm claiming to believe in the same God, the fact that she experiences peace about going to Florida and I don't, and that I'm thinking death and destruction, that can't be the same God. Maybe what she's hearing is right. And that was the one thought that basically had me step onto the plane. You know, one of the first things Dr. Colbert says, he says, so I, I, you know, I understand you've been diagnosed with schizophrenia. Well, I just want to let you know this is a completely treatable condition. And that just blew my mind. It, it was like, I think at that point I knew we were in the right spot. Not only had I arrived in Florida alive, but there's this doctor, you know, this renowned doctor that's giving me hope about a situation that every other physician deemed hopeless. And from there, my life completely turned around. Uh, I'm on no medication, you know. I'm, I, I don't experience any symptoms. I have a bad day just like everybody else, and that's a good thing. <laughs> You know what I mean? It, it's, not, it's not completely derailing my life. Uh, you know, I'm living a life that I never dreamed was possible. I thought my life was going to be medication hospitalization for the rest of my life. And since then, coming out, um, I'm experiencing purpose. I'm, I'm living in a way that I get to use the gifts and abilities that God, that God gave me.